It's the moment of truth. It's time to find out if Denji's arc comes to a close earlier than I imagined. <laughs> oh, this is a little bit before what we saw. Honestly, I'm impressed that she managed to carry him all the way here. That is some real dedication. That's commitment to a task. <laughs> I don't know, I've had a lot of nights, I've had a lot of <laughs> drug experiences. I don't think I've ever been carried home on a girl's back. Is she gonna take a shower? This is all too calculated. Like, she's drunk, yeah, but she already knows what she wants to do. And she's confident she's gonna accomplish her task. I would tell Denji to run, as usual, but... I don't think he really needs to or wants to. Another one? That's true. You gotta keep it going. It only hurts when you stop. Right, right, yeah, of course. This is obviously alcohol-fueled to a large extent, but I don't think that's the start of it. The alcohol-fueled part of it was what fueled the follow-through, the power and commitment to caveman carry Denji on her back all the way to her apartment. But the motivation was different. The motivation seems to be Makima. Something about Makima being there and all the attention she got triggered, I don't know what, some mixture of competition, jealousy, loneliness, and the need to feel desired. And as we all know, nothing says desirability like carrying an unconscious boy on your back to your house to sleep with him. Run, Denji, or don't. Just stay there. Oh my god, we literally have like a horror movie POV <laughs> as she stalks her way into the bedroom. Drunk Cam. They did that so well. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk Vision. I would pay for a whole episode of that. The second time she <laughs> blows liquid into Denji's mouth this evening. I guess beer is... A huge upgrade. I would say poor Denji, but if we're being honest, this is a bargain most most guys would take, I think. Most guys would take this deal. Not me, of course. I would never. But poor depraved souls out there. You know damn right. You know. There's a little bit of controversy over whether or not he drank. I have a feeling he did. I don't think he'd be this drunk from the throwing up episode. I sure got worked up about it. That really, like, triggered her insecurities in a big way. But this is not gonna help. This is not gonna help her. For long. I don't know how they managed to make these scenes so intimate. Something about the detail they put into it. The little shots of stuff. <laughs> but don't cut off there. I like how that whole intro was just stuff we had mostly already seen, yet it was still super suspenseful, somehow. I feel like in some way Denji's coming for Aki, like, he's probably gonna sleep with the girl that Aki likes, and now it looks like he's also gonna sleep with the girl who likes Aki. It's a love triangle, and Aki's not even a point. You know! <laughs> I get that, though. That's just shock talking. Stick like, oh, his arms. Is that really relevant? <laughs> That's not a relevant question. You pick now, you pick now, and now is the time when you are suddenly reflecting on yes. good ideas. Yeah, there you go. That's more like it. Uh oh. And of course, a flashback to cut away from the action. He'll get over it real fast. This is another vicarious kiss. She's really good at what she does. Oh, she passed out. Marina, <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised. Somehow, for reasons I can't quite explain, I feel like Denji sleeping with Makima will also mean his imminent death. He's so motivated. He's so sure of himself now. This is how a lot of the fan base feels too, apparently. I've noticed out of all the reactions I've done, all the, the controversial topics on this channel, by far the most controversial issue <laughs> is respecting age of consent laws and fictional characters. A certain character in a certain popular show sets out to exterminate a race of people. Another character in the same show sets out to make everyone infertile to eliminate all birth of a certain race. That's cool, it was justified. 17 year old boy! <laughs> Wants to sleep with an adult? No. We, we're not having that around here. 
Yes, <laughs> obviously. Have you seen her? Do you know how much game she has? Ooh, I don't trust this at all. I don't trust this one bit. Although, I guess the strategy for her is to get Makima away from Aki. Yeah, okay. Still, I don't trust it. As if Denji getting with Makima would stop her from also getting with Aki if she wanted to. That was a language that Denji could understand. I'm not sure Denji knows what he's getting himself, himself into. She would not. She would not, unless it was to her advantage. One of Makima's charms, one of the things she's so good at, is making herself seem so elusive. That's partly deliberate. That's partly just because she actually is busy and stuff, but... She's an interesting character, to say the least. There's a lot going on. What the hell? What is this, like, an attack? No! That's no way that, that- There's no way that just happened. There's no way that just happened. There's no way that just happened! What?! The whole team is probably next. Uh, what? What? How do they just... Her character? That is a bold choice. That is a super bold choice. I'm still a, a little bit skeptical because of how bold that choice is. It's so rare you have a character that interesting that you, they just dispense with immediately. She's one of the most intriguing characters I've ever seen. To just take her out like that of the show is impressive. <laughs> Shocking. And a little disappointing because I liked her. My only guess is that... I've suspected for a while that she has her own thing going on. She doesn't respect authority. Maybe they got, they got wind of that. But that means they're coming for the team next. Denji's love pact just got really one-sided. I'm stunned. I can't believe that just happened. If it did happen. I'm skeptical. Did it happen? What is real? Also, it's crazy that that wasn't even a cliffhanger. That wasn't the end of the episode. That was just... Oh, they're going one by one. They're going one by one down her team. But why? It's always humans. It's always humans that, that are the enemies. It's never the demons or devils, ultimately. Why, Obachan? Did Kobani just die too? She didn't even have a chance to become a fan favorite. I love her, she's great, she's the best. Because they're in a lot of danger. Is this their assassin? Oh, that's alright then. As long as it was only a handful. It's still better than breaking statutory laws. That, well, I'm dead you can come back. This assassin is not, not the best. Like, really announced his presence. And no one ate ramen there ever again. Pull the pull the cord soon as soon as possible. What? What the hell is this thing? Oh, I've saw. He's in the opening, in the intro. What the hell is this thing? I guess they upgraded their choice of assassins for for Denji. It's it can't be a coincidence either that he looks. Just like Denji, in terms of his, his blades. He's like Shadow Denji. Hold on a second. This is terrible timing, but it just occurred to me that Makima might be alive. We don't know what demon she made her promise to or vow to or whatever. What's with the count? You gotta get three hits in? Aki's holding his own though. Nice. This is such a cool shot. This whole thing, this whole sequence is so amazing. As always. Well, that was an interesting villain for, for five seconds. It was pretty cool for that scene. Wow, thank you for that expert analysis power. Which organization or which person that we know, which human being, which evil human made a deal with the gun devil or trying to appease the gun devil? Someone's afraid or someone is in allegiance with it. Who the hell are you?
who was really dead and who was really alive. I'm so confused. He's got a whole buster sword through his head. Was that an attack? My heart can't take it with the show anymore. Power. Power. This is more of the villain introduction than I expected. Damn, even the devils don't want to fight. Aki's fine, right? I know his whole chest exploded, but he's fine, right? That's a major deal. That's a huge wager she just made. You're gonna catch these hands, all of them. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, I don't think this is it. I don't think this is good for her. I don't think she's gonna- I think Aki's gonna live. I think she's gone. Is she sacrificing her life for Aki? She said everything. Damn, that's real love right there. Will it do any good? Oh my god, this is just one thing after another. Get out of there! God, that was such a genius shot. You have to live, man. You gotta live. This has gotta mean something. Oh my god. <coughs> oh god, I'm literally dying. This episode just killed me. And the credits playing tribute to them. Who is left? Who is left alive? After this episode, there's gotta be a way, right? I don't know. I don't have to think because there's like curses and powers and stuff like that. You can make pacts. Agi's gonna think about, about her every time he smokes a cigarette. This show has always been crazy, but that was that episode was just a different level of craziness. I think I got lured in a little bit. I got lured in by the the safety, the fun, the relative peace of their little drinking shenanigans. I thought that the <laughs> the intro scene with her getting ready to go go to bed was exciting. After that, that episode just did not let up. My hunch is that Makima's still alive. She just seems like too important of a character to kill off like that. Plus there's powers, there's abilities and stuff like that. Himeno seems to be gone just because of the symbolic nature of her death, saving Aki. I actually think I, I'm not gonna say I predicted it, that's giving myself too much credit. I think I said something that alluded to the fact that she was in danger because there's a, there was a running thing where it was the idea that you have to be a certain kind of crazy in order to do this job successfully, which I think I was arguing was a representation for certain areas of life where you have to kind of abandon stability and abandon kind of normalcy and be crazy in a certain way to reach certain heights just because you're competing at, at a level of crazy people who are willing to abandon everything to get there. But she was showing signs of wanting to back out. And that was represented by the fact that she wanted to have something like a, a relationship with Aki and maybe, you know, start a life with him or something. She was getting attached to something that wasn't fighting the gun demon, this impossible task. Her heart was already kind of shifting out of it. And here that very directly cost her her life. Her love for Aki sort of forcing her hand. It's a really beautiful scene as much as it is tragic. Going forward, I think the real tragedy now is just for Aki. I mean, he's already lost so much to not only lose her, but then realize that she sacrificed her life for him. That's a great gift, but it's also a huge burden to bear emotionally. I wonder if Khomeini's still alive? I suspect that she is because she died off screen. And I know she's a f fan favorite. She can't be a fan favorite for those three episodes or four episodes, right? About the villain, he looks Amazing. The fight scene was amazing. It can't be a coincidence that he physically resembles Denji in terms of his blades. What's interesting about him though is that it seems like he's not even the real villain. He's kind of the, the villain henchman with the, the girl who is be besides him. It's seeming a lot more powerful. That snake shot was just so great with the way it ate Kareno's demon and then vanished, leaving her severed head suspended in the air. I wonder what exactly triggered all this. It seems like they were getting a little bit too close. They got that piece of the gun demon, or the gun shard or whatever, the bullet shard, and then suddenly they're all being assassinated. It doesn't seem like that's the work of demons. If it is the work of demons, they're recruiting human beings. But I suspect it's probably the higher ups in some level. There's probably a way in which either the evil is useful to them, they have a greater plot that Makima is accidentally undoing, they want the power for themselves, or they just feel threatened and don't want to wake a sleeping giant. But like always, it's going to be human evil, you know? The demons are just reflections of humanity, and it's always going to be human versus human in the end. <laughs>